Today, I'm featuring Jackie Schuler, one of the OGs for team reporters in the NFL after having been hired by the New England Patriots at the age of 23. Detroit, though, has been home for Jackie and husband Josh, the head strength and conditioning coach for the Detroit Lions since 2016. Jackie talks her career in sports reporting along with her Georgia roots, and she peels back the curtain on what it's like being married into the NFL, the good and the adversity that comes along with it, especially during the Schuler's IVF journey that would result in their miracle babies. Here is Jackie's story. I'm joined by Jackie Schuler, but we have a ton of NFL fans that um, I assume are tuning in and the Patriot fans will know you <laughs> as Jackie Britton because yeah. once upon a time you were the Patriots team reporter yeah um which is crazy to think how long ago was that I know my first year was when I was 23 so that was 10 years ago just gave my age away but that's fine so yeah 10 years ago was my mm -hmm. first year with them and I was with them for three full seasons so 2012 through 2015 technically um so yeah it's a good time another nugget really about time. you is if people are if you've heard the Schuler last name before, it's because Josh Schuler is the head strength and conditioning coach here for the Detroit Lions. Uh, did you think 10 years later after the Patriots, you would still be this immersed into the NFL life? No, it's, you know, our story is so crazy how, I mean, if I was thought I was still immersed in the NFL life, I thought I would be, you know, still working mm -hmm. as a reporter. But um, trying to do that with someone who's a coach in the NFL is just really hard because the hours, as you know, are crazy and so um you know it's really hard to have both people working in the NFL if you ever want to see each other it's you know it's tough so mm -hmm. um you know when I moved up here after we got married um you know I looked for jobs in TV and it's obviously really hard to find a TV job especially when you're going to a specific market and you right. don't have the flexibility to be like I'll go anywhere in the country you know yeah no you're you, that doesn't happen yeah you don't I'm going here and I'm going to get a job in right TV. that doesn't happen right yeah. so um it took a while to find a few things and um you know he's been blessed to be here as long as this is his seventh season so mm -hmm. it's our third head coach um so we've been able to to be here as long as we have and it's been a lot of fun. It's kind of crazy how our world's connected, including you right? <laughs> in my world and then now us being together here. So Yeah, throwback to 2018 yeah. when we first met yep. in good old Toledo, Ohio good at BCSN. Yeah. Yes, so uh, BCSN brought you in to host their high school football show. Yes. And you you were used to hosting Georgia football high yeah. school, um, which is a beast. Yeah, Ohio so is Ohio's getting up there too yeah uh, they're that pretty was good a lot too. of fun I had like I felt like I had so much to learn because I didn't know the landscape yeah in Ohio so I was learning so much in like a short amount of time mm -hmm. <laughs> so I really leaned on you and you know Mike and Mike and everybody else over there too. I was new too so I was like I always pull oh, the card never, I'm not from here I never would have thought that I was like oh my gosh I'm so intimidated by all the stuff I don't know and everybody oh. seemed like they knew everything and mm -hmm. um but yeah I mean I'm, I'm from Georgia so I covered high school football in Georgia so obviously I knew the landscape there uh, was super comfortable with it and I there I mean I just I loved working for the Patriots but there is just something mm -hmm. about high school football yeah. I just love it and I don't know if it's like the purity of the sport is still around and you know still the intact. kids and I, mean, I remember covering like high school football championships at the Georgia Dome which is no longer there mm -hmm. RIP but um and just like the wide-eyed nature of all the kids like you know to even make it to the, the state championships and then you know to know that that is the end of a lot of these careers for mm -hmm. a lot of these guys and so I really loved it and um you know so I was excited when the Toledo job came up I'd been up here for a year trying to find something um and did one season with you guys and man, it was a lot to keep up with. Right. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was fun. I mean, it, you know, it was fun to get back into that world. So mm -hmm. I just, there's something about that, that I just, I'll always have a soft spot for the high school football. I feel like it helps being raised, born and raised in Georgia. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to help me out with where you're from. I do. I am yeah. not. That's okay. Uh, savvy with Georgia don't. names. Yes. Yeah. So I'm from McDonough, which okay. is 30 minutes south of Atlanta, just mm -hmm. to give a little context. And I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I'm from Atlanta. And they're like from the north side, which is all fine. We do I'm that like, here oh. with Detroit, Detroit as well. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, no one ever knows the south side. That's okay. Um, but it. Yeah, so that's where I'm from, and then um, you know I went to college at Georgia State, and I I started like video videoing football practices in high school. Like we had a broadcasting class, and they're like, sure, you know, we need we need some help, you know, with taping our games or practices if you want to do that. So, so the actual football, you were doing that for the football team, not yeah, like the station. in high school, okay, right? Yeah, in high school, just to like you know get some reps in and stuff, and mm -hmm. then you know at college I got 
more reps. And then that's where I was able to intern at GPB when I was done with college. I interned there for a year, had enough material to put a reel Mm -hmm. together. Then I got the job with the Patriots from there and was there for three years. And then actually ended up going back to GPB Mm because there was an anchor position available. And I was ready to kind of get back home. And, you know, there were a lot of different things kind of you know, toying at me. So, um, I went, went back and then was anchoring the show that I was, you know, interning on, you know, four years before that. Right. Um, and then Josh and I met in the middle of all that and, um, he got the job here. So after we got married, I came up here, looked for some TV work, met you in Toledo. And then, um, I did some stuff for channel seven, mm-hmm. like just this past year, which, I, I wish I could have done more, but there were a lot of complications with that. But um, just in my personal life, that yeah. I couldn't do as much as I wanted to. But mm-hmm. um, and then and then yeah. So now we're we're here, and I'm not really working in TV anymore. So that's why this podcast was fun for me to come yes. on to. So I was like, yeah, I get to be in production a little bit again. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the short version, I guess I'd say, of our road here. Yeah, but you spent a, you you did spend a lot of time um in the sports broadcasting yeah. world. You know, mm-hmm. so what loved it. What yeah. drew you to that profession first off? Uh, you know, I think I do think growing up in Georgia, high school football is huge. And even though my high school wasn't, by the time I got there, we weren't very good anymore. <laughs> but um, I think that pomp and circumstance or that aura just is part of yeah. the culture down there. And I, you know, I loved it. And I always, you know, I, I mean, I played sports. I was always mm-hmm. super into sports. I feel like I was kind of a tomboy <laughs> um, most of my life. And, um, you know, I, I just, I loved it and I wanted to be around it. And, um, so in high school when I kind of started, um, you know, video in the, the football practices and stuff like that, it, you know, I was trying to think of what I want to do and as a career. And my dad had kind of, he was like, you know, I think you'd be, I think you'd do pretty well, um, you know, on camera as a mm-hmm. reporter. And I knew I didn't want to do any like hard news stuff. Cause that just isn't my news is, it's, it's, news is just tough you know I'm it's like sad. I want to be happy and I yeah. want like I want to be around like exciting stuff and mm-hmm. fun stuff and that's just what my like calls my heart so um yeah I went you know studied journalism all through Georgia State and um did you know interviews and articles for our website and kind of just kept going from there like wherever the whatever opportunities opened up at that point mm-hmm. so so were you just dressed in your high school like I don't know football sideline uniform just going out there shooting videos yeah, i mean I, I think i was wearing like yeah like workout clothes i okay. mean it was so hot down there oh like, yeah especially that t- time of year it was just like i wasn't even doing anything on camera i'd say R- right it was just strictly yeah like filming the practices and you know i mean i think it was really just for the coaches to watch i think yeah. like i don't think it was for anything other than like mm-hmm. them to get feedback on on the practices and stuff but at the time i thought that was like the greatest thing ever i was like oh i'm part of the I'm part of the football team you know this is cool so um so yeah that's, okay. it feels like so long ago now but yeah it was such a fun time i i know i know you have a sister um who yeah. is watching the babies oh yeah right now mm-hmm. uh, Family member, were they involved in sports? Was your dad coaching football? No. Um, you know, I have three sisters, so we're all, it's a family so four. Four, four, four girls. Um, you know, I my mom was a gymnast growing up. My aunt was a gymnast actually for the University of Georgia, mm-hmm. um, and she was pretty instrumental in, like, the Title IX um, when they were, like, threatening to get rid of the gymnastics program um, for – I don't even remember why, but I think it was something – anyway, so, like, my family's always kind of had, like, a sporty side to it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would go to, you know, we'd go to Georgia for watch gymnastics games and my sister ended up going to Georgia. So when she went there, um, I would go there on the weekends and people always make fun of me because I technically I didn't go to Georgia, but I always root for Georgia. Um, people make fun of me for that. And I'm like, well, I went on Saturdays, (laughs) you know, like, and honestly, what other day matters most? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, I had a lot of friends from high school who ended up going to Georgia. And so, um, it wasn't hard for me like on the weekends to drive Mm -hmm. there from Georgia state. And, um, yeah, so we, you know, technically we weren't like the sportiest family in the world but like we were all pretty into it and um yeah I mean like it's it's funny I always wish I went to Georgia especially now that they won the national championship and I know that's a sore subject for you guys I'm sorry honestly but. like it's a blur <laughs> I know because I, I didn't know. watch much after halftime yeah because um, I think we had one field goal up on the scoreboard I and I'm when that happened, I'm like, yay, points I know and I, that was it I can't remember either and I mean yeah we were I mean our our 
biggest test is always like, okay, well, this is all good, but like, can anybody beat Alabama? You know, like, is always a thing. But anyway, exactly. that's a different exactly. day. I'll um, take Georgia over Bama any day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have some new. They just they feel more wholesome. Yeah, well, than, you than know, time. It's <laughs> just yeah. do. It's time. I think it was time. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of like I think it's just where I'm from and mm-hmm. what influenced me at the time and. Um, yeah, I just kind of held on to that, I guess. I'm one of three girls. You're one of four so girls. fun, yeah. So that's terrifying to, I feel like, a lot of people who yeah. have never been in that world. I have terrifying stories of what my sisters and I used to do to each other. Do you have any um, oh, really great sister stories? I mean, I hate to say that I was the prankster <laughs> of the family. Um, you really should be interviewing my sisters because they probably have more stories there. <laughs> they had to willing endure from to you. Share. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like I was the oldest, so I was kind of that like motherly figure as I got mm-hmm. older for sure. But um, when we were younger, I mean, I was yeah, I was pulling. Off. I remember one prank I did was my youngest sister. So that between me and then my very youngest sister, there's ten years between <laughs> us. So she, you know, when she, whatever she was four, I don't, I was fourteen, and so I put. I think she asked me to put like Gatorade in her sippy cup, and I put pickle juice in there. Ew! I know. Well, she took it and just. Like, I would enjoy threw that. <laughs> but would some you? people oh, probably God. wouldn't though. If I mean, you're not I like expecting pickles, it, but I'm not drinking. Yeah, maybe that was it. She I, was no, I would so drink mad, and like I would just do dumb things like yeah, that. That's and you know, I got in trouble for like I gave her she so I she wanted ketchup for her fries, and I gave her like hot sauce, and oh my that was gosh. that was not good. I got in trouble for that one. So um, not proud of a lot of the stuff. But I, yeah, I mean, we were kind of rough and tumble yeah. with each other, you know, and mm-hmm. um, it was, it was funny though. Yeah, it was four sisters. I mean, we were, we, we were rough and tumble. Yeah. I mean, I think my parents would agree with that. So. Oh my gosh. But, okay. So I feel like that prepared you for working in the sports yeah. broadcasting industry, kind of having the lifestyle you have now. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't imagine taking on a team reporter role in the NFL at 23 years old. Yeah, um, I know. I was 25 it's, when I did it, and I think those two years really did help me being yeah. thrust into local sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, another t- a team reporter job that I had in college football. It's still not the NFL. So what do you think was the hardest obstacle to overcome as a 23-year-old yeah. working in the NFL yeah. um, back when you were doing it? I mean, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but I do feel like when I started with the Patriots at mm-hmm. 23 um, – I do think that was kind of a newer thing where, like, I didn't even know to look for jobs within, like, team, you know, media. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was trying to – well, I I did have contacts with the Falcons, so I was trying, you know, to to get a job there, but that didn't work out. Mm So, um, and, you know, I think it was just kind of new to me, like this, you know, the push towards online content, um, you know, people were doing that more than, like, watching local news or TV really as much. And – I think the the hardest thing is I, I look back on it now was like Instagram was so big back then. And I think that, you know, that ended up being kind of a like not a safe place for like just because you get so caught up in like, you know, this other world that mm-hmm. like isn't really true, you it's know, not. I mean, and, and like I did use it as like a platform for, you know, promoting things that I was involved in or promoting the team. And um, but I think that like that all kind of was happening at the same time. And then like, you know, when I got out of that role, I I noticed I had like so many people unfollow me and that like, that like, yeah, Yeah. I was like, why do people like, cause I didn't work for the Patriots anymore. So I guess they just didn't care, you know? Is that a Boston thing? I don't know. I mean, there were Patriots from fans from all over. So, but I think like, just, I wish I had been a little more like protective of my my self like yeah. in in terms of like social media and not really knowing what it was at the time and um but I think it was you know it was all genuine like just I would put stuff up there about whatever the games and you know interviews I was doing and mm-hmm. um it was just all so new and now it's just crazy because I feel like I get all of my information from like <laughs> social media yeah. you know um so I think like not really realizing how big that world was Mm -hmm. and just kind of how cool that is you know now looking back on it at the time I was like okay it's just like working for the website cool but like you know we we took it I mean it was a serious job I mean we were like trying to put stuff on there because the demand for the content was there all the time and um so I mean it felt like I never worked at a tv station until I got here but like like a, a news station but it felt like you know, it felt like what I would imagine a 24-hour news yeah. station being. I mean, we were trying to turn stuff out, put 
however much we could on the website every single day and, you know, try to do as much unique stuff as we could. And um, so I think, you know, I think maybe that answers your question, hopefully, Mm -hmm. is just like not realizing how big the online world was becoming. And that includes like, you know, Instagram and Twitter and and all of that. So I I tried to match up where you and husband Josh might have met. Yeah. I couldn't match him up. Yeah. It was a little difficult. Yeah. So, uh, twisty road. So, sure. how did you get here to the NFL wife life and, and meet Josh, who is, okay. like I mentioned, Lions head strength and conditioning coach? His buddy is Moses. And Moses and Josh worked together at Colorado. Mm-hmm. And then, not long after that, Moses got the assistant strength conditioning coach job for the Patriots. He introduced us one day when I was, I was working for the team. And I was like, after a media availability, and, you know, he's like, oh, that's my buddy Josh. He's here helping out. And I was just like, cool you know hey and he like I remember he tried to you know make conversation because he knew I was from Georgia and he's Mm -hmm. like oh you know I I was a GA at Auburn and I was like I hate Auburn (laughs) I mean I didn't say that but I was just like okay well I'm a Georgia fan but it was it was like kind of cute looking back on it. I have to tell you why that doesn't surprise me at all because um Josh is very private on social media yeah yeah but his Instagram bio does say what married to a Georgia peach yeah so he's very proud of your southern roots he, and yeah. was trying to find any way to connect I know with it was very sweet and but, I mean that's like all I remember from that interaction it was mm-hmm. so quick and then I mean and then I didn't talk to him for a year after that until really? I had left the Patriots I was back so in the Atlanta. Auburn comment just did nothing for it, it, it just didn't <laughs> stick yeah it didn't stick so um I had moved back to Atlanta mm-hmm. was now anchoring um the high school football show that I'd loved so much. And so I, but I was really missing working in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I really missed it and was having a hard time wrestling with that decision. And um, so I, once our season was over, I flew back up to um, New England and just to see my friends. And, um, you know, I got to go to a game. And mm-hmm. um, when I was there at the stadium for the game, Josh was also there. He was helping out again because it, it always kind of ended up being that same time of year. And um, so I was like, oh, like I was I was much more relaxed, I think, because I wasn't working. I was just yeah. there for fun. And I was like, oh, yeah, re- we met. That's right. And um, kind of just had small talk. And then after that, um, you know, he I we exchanged numbers and um, started dating long distance. Mm-hmm. And I was yeah, we dated, you know, not not super long, but we, we dated and then got married. And um, he had gotten the and in the process of our dating, he had gotten the job here. Um, and so once we were married, then I moved up here. Mm-hmm. And like I said, tried to find a job, tried to keep working in um, sports and TV. It was super hard to find anything, but I was trying to meet with anybody and everybody I could. And yep. it wasn't working out. And I was like, well, I've got it. I can't just be sitting at home. I wanted, you know, like I need to be doing something. And um, I was like, what else am I passionate about? You know, fitness and, you know, working out. So I started working at a gym in Plymouth mm-hmm. as like the front desk person. I was literally cleaning studio cleaning the bathrooms dealing with you know just customer service and trying to get people you know to come through marketing and social media and stuff and I was like cool I'll just work out here for free and clean the studio that'll be great and then um I was like you know I really I'd like to be a trainer and um you know Josh kind of encouraged because that's you know obviously something he's really good at (laughs) and so he um you know encouraged me to get certified and Mm -hmm. helped me while I was studying and so I got certified to be a personal trainer and I mean, for three full years of being here, I did that primarily. Like I was teaching boot camp classes and um, in the process of getting a Pilates certification and just loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool to have him to kind of like help support me through that because he's obviously went to school for this. And so Mm -hmm. he knows a lot more than I do. And I was able to learn a lot from him. And, um, you know, I'd teach classes and like put in a new move or something and, and tell my clients like, Okay, this is courtesy of my husband. So if you this hate is what it, the lions do. Yeah, I'm like if you hate it, don't blame me. Oh my gosh. Um so, you know, that that balance was hard and I think like you know, when we got married, every you know, we had started making friends up here and mm-hmm. everybody was like so enamored by, you know, oh my gosh, he works for the lions and it was like so cool and and it is very cool, but if you know Josh, he's like it's he doesn't he's not defined by what he does Mm -hmm. and that's something that we really that you know like I really liked in him and um and so you know aside from like our faith being the foundation of our relationship and then you know we're both passionate about the same things football and exercise and so um you know it that's kind of how we our relationship started and now he's been here and um it's it's been really fun and he's you know like I said taught me a lot and um I've 
I love doing the personal training thing, but it was hard for me in the beginning because, you know, everybody was so enamored with his job with yeah. like the lions. And I was kind of like, well, where does that leave me? You know, like right. I kind of felt like I was just in the shadow of his job. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of was like constantly looking for like my place here in this area. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I did find, you know, you and I worked together in Toledo yep. and then, um, I had a very small stint with channel seven and, um, but then we, you know, started a family mm -hmm. and that took a lot out of both of us, uh, um, just cause we had to go through a lot to get our mm -hmm. family. And, um, then when I got pregnant, I have, I have twins now, they're five months. <laughs> um, and so when I got pregnant, there were a lot of complications mm -hmm. and, um, you know, so it just, now I am not working other than being there for my kids yeah. and being home for them and bringing them to camp as much as I can so that he can see them, um, you know, because their hours are just, they're crazy. Okay. But I will say, I mean, like everything, like so Coach Campbell's first season here was the season I was pregnant and having a ton of complications. And, you know, I never for a second worried, like if Josh would be able to make it to an appointment and like he was able to be at everything and wow. that, you know, I think that just says so much to me about the coaching staff mm -hmm. here and like the ability that I didn't have to stress or worry about like, you know, things when they were going mm -hmm. crazy. And, um, you know, that was like just really cool. So now, you know, not doing any TV anymore at the moment, but, um, but yeah, that's kind of a very long mm -hmm. short story to where we are now. Yeah, I, I know because I've been following you on Instagram, of course. Yeah, same. So when you, you posted your post of, of your IVF journey, mm -hmm. I had no idea. I yeah. Think most people had no idea that that's what you're going through to get yeah. these two precious babies. I know. Now. It's um it's funny because I'm not like – I mean, I'm a pretty transparent person. I feel mm -hmm. like with friends and, you know, people I get to know, like I'm not afraid to go deep when I meet yeah. people are, are right off the bat. But – um, it like on Instagram, I like to keep things very lighthearted and fun. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, like I said, it's just kind of not a safe place. I just, I like to keep things fun. And, um, but anyway, so I did feel like I couldn't just all of a sudden post that I'm pregnant. I'm like, if I start, if I'm, I'm never, it's not like I'm never going to post again. I'm going to be pregnant and people are going to see that. So I want to like, I want to put it out there, you mm -hmm. know, to my <laughs> five friends, <laughs> but I'm like, I want to put it out there, but I want people to know that like, you know, this has been a really hard mm -hmm. three and a half years. And like, I had a hard time getting on Instagram and seeing people who were pregnant and these yeah. like, you know, elaborate, um, you know, pregnancy announcements, which is all fine by the way. Like mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not against anyone who wants to do that, but I feel like my perspective was so different because we went through IVF and we went through IUI several times and, um, you know, we didn't know if it was ever going to happen for us. Right. And so, I wanted to be real because I feel like Instagram is just, it can be so fake, yes. you know? And it's like, yep. you know, I feel like you got to have a little bit of realness to it. And mm -hmm. I, I have to remind myself to remember that, like when I'm posting things and like, yeah, it's fun that we get to go to training camp, but like mm -hmm. the reality is that the twins were screaming in the car the whole way home. <laughs> and like, you know, the rest of the day was a mess because they missed <laughs> their nap. And, um, but so yeah, we, we went through IVF here, had a phenomenal doctor and wow. team and um like I said you know like a 19 I was 19 weeks and had um they were extremely worried about preterm labor and so I had to have an emergency surgery done and um it was very risky I mean it thankfully worked and I wow. you know thankfully it worked and everybody's here and it's fine but at the time it was at five months pregnant you had to have an emergency yeah surgery. I think it's something they do it's a very routine thing and it, yeah. it, I have a lot of friends who've had it done a lot earlier on in pregnancies mm -hmm. um but I think the fact that I had two babies yep. and we I was already so far along any interference just was highly risky and so um wow. you know once that happened I was like you know <laughs> I was mentally not in a good spot I was like um, you know, but that's why I said, like, after that, I, I was very monitored with our doctor's appointments and Josh never missed a thing. Um, and that was huge to me because it was obviously the middle of the season and, you know, it's not going well. And then mm -hmm. now this was happening and it was just, it was a lot for him to juggle. And I was just so grateful that I never had to worry like, well, is coach Campbell going to be okay with you coming? Like, you know, yeah. it was, he was always like, go take care of your family first and we'll see you when we can, you know? Wow. So, um, so yeah, it was, I mean, it like, I want people to know like that stuff's, you know, mm -hmm. it's not all it's roses and everything. So I did put that on Instagram and, um, thankfully I went super far in my pregnancy and they were healthy and everything's going great. And mm -hmm. 
now I just feel like a totally different person. (laughs) You are a mom of two. Yeah, that's true. Everything, a lot has changed in the last five months, but, um, yeah, just to like, you know, feel that like burden Mm -hmm. gone, like lifted. And I didn't even really realize it was there, but there was so much anxiety and stress around that time. And, um, so yeah, life changed really quickly. I stopped, you know, I wasn't as worried about finding a job in sports broadcasting anymore as I was about like, okay, we got to get these babies here safely. And you know, how are we going to do that? So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the story there. Oh my gosh. I, I, when I, I mean, when I come into the building, uh, Josh's very large truck is usually out there first, <laughs> which is great. It's great for two babies yeah. now. It'll fit everyone yeah. uh, and a few and our, friends. And our giant dog, too. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. Exactly. Yes. Your yeah. huge dog. Yeah. Um, which is so cute, so cute with the babies. Yeah. But, I mean, we keep talking about the long hours Josh works, but mm-hmm. he was able to get away for some appointments. I mean, yeah. what what does – the the week look like in the NFL while Josh is here and then yeah you were alone for a lot of it right yeah I mean thankfully my you know my mom Mm -hmm. you know we don't have family around here so it's hard to have to get help and um my mom came up and Josh's mom has come up a lot too and um you know right now during training camp he you know he's gone he leaves around 5 a.m. or something yeah. like that and then, you know, gets home, in, like, definitely after – I mean, I don't even keep track anymore, but it's definitely after the babies go to bed. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't see them at all, you know, unless I bring them to training camp, which is why I'm so adamant about, like, we're going to camp because yeah. I want him to see his kids. And um, so it's – yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, I feel like, you know, and you'll understand this too because you work in the NFL, mm-hmm. but so many people don't – realize how tough the schedule is and like you know and it's it's tough on the players but I'm like it's tough on the coaches too man Mm -hmm. like and the wives and the the babies yeah and I'm like he's like literally not home and my friends will be like well but they don't play on Saturdays isn't he and I'm like no it's like a seven day a week thing you know and I think like with me working for the Patriots I learned the schedule really Mm -hmm. quickly in the off season too and everybody's like oh the off season he just he's home all the time right and I'm like no there's all kinds of stuff going on and so um you know, I think that like that does help our partnership, especially in marriage and now having children. It's mm-hmm. like I can see how that would be very difficult, you know, if he had married someone who, you know, didn't oh, understand no the schedule yeah. or if, you know, if I had, you know, like if I wasn't okay with his hours and, you know, I could see how that would be, you know, not a good, it wouldn't be good for, for marriages. But yeah. you and I both working in the NFL, like we understand things and, you know, it's not it's not like shocking to me when he gets no. home at whatever time because mm-hmm. I just I know what it is. Um, so it's it's tough, but I feel like I'm just so used to it now that you know we make it work and we know Friday nights are tend to be a little bit lighter, you know, for him here, yep. and so he usually gets home early, and that's when we can try to plan a little something that night. And um, so it's it's just so part of our lives now that. You know, it's we've learned to, we've learned how to mm-hmm. work with it, and it's it's actually been really good. I mean, the last the last year definitely has been a lot better, um, just with you know him being able to to get home and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. Wow, I, I love what you posted of Josh, um, and you mentioned that he wakes up before the babies are up. Yeah. He does. Which is probably a, a good thing. The babies aren't waking him up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're but, past that point now, yeah, thankfully. Thank goodness. Yeah. And then, but he, yeah, he gets home when the baby's already asleep. So, yeah. um, you, you shared a picture of him praying over the baby. Yeah. He which does. Is it is incredible. So it's he does that every sweet. morning. Yeah. Every, um, every night at okay. least. Okay. I think he used to go in there in the mornings. I don't know if he still yeah. does, but, um, cause <laughs> there was one point where they started waking up earlier. For you and you're like, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll do that. But at <laughs> night they seem to be pretty knocked out. Yep. Like they're, you know, exhausted. So, um, yeah, he goes in there and he prays over him and, you know, that, like that to me is exactly who he is. And Mm -hmm. yeah, he's a strength coach and, you know, he's like, he's supposed to be like, you know, strong, burly man yelling at these players. Right. Yeah, exactly. I know it's so funny when I watch him in that dynamic because I'm, you know, I'm just so used to seeing him at home where he's like, you know, holding the babies and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's so it's just, it's very different, but that's exactly who he is. I mean, he, yeah, he comes home at late at night, goes in there, says a quick prayer over him and. And that's, you know, that's just how it goes for a couple of days. And then, you know, we get lucky and schedule changes and he gets home a little early and gets yep. to see him. And that's great, too. But we just kind of got to roll with whatever we get. Yeah. You know, so we're we're looking forward to the off season. Yeah. And there's the schedule's a little. <laughs> yeah. A little bit nicer. Yeah. And that's why it was nice. I mean, they were born in March, so it was kind of a slower yeah. period. And so, mm-hmm. you know, he was home a lot, which was, again, fantastic. And um, I'm just so grateful for 
for that and that he was able to be there. And, you know, those were some really crucial times too. So it was awesome to have him there. But yeah. You just listened to another episode of Off the Record with Danny Rogers. A new episode drops every Tuesday.